guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Over the course of the last several months, I've had many conversations with people about different die cutting systems, specifically the AccuQuilt Go, because that's the one I have. Whoops. I've actually talked about some of the dies in a couple of my recent videos. One of them is in the rectangular die, when I was hoping that I could use that for making the, the port, the port cath pillows there for on the seat belts which it didn't work unfortunately. And then the other one I had is the Drunkard's Path die that I cut out a bunch of pieces that I'm going to try to make a couple quilts out of. Then I recently had a request to show my all my dies and talk a little bit about the system. And I'm kind of feeling a little bit um, a little bit headachey today. It's, it's kind of a, a, sh a overcast shadowy day. And for me that tends to give me a, a migraine like headache. And I'm really not in the mood for sewing, so I thought, great, this would be the perfect time to just stand here and talk about the die system with you guys. That way I don't have to try to think and sew and talk at the same time because I already messed up once today trying to make a little zipper pouch, and I don't want to do it again. So this is what we were going to make this week, but I just cannot wrap my head around it, and I kept making them inside out, and I got the zippers in wrong. So we're going to do this on another week. These are nice little Notion pouches. Okay, there are several die systems out there on the market, and I can only talk about the AccuQuilt Go because this is the only one I've ever owned or used. I have this die here, and I'm going to move everything in a minute, but the overhead light with the fan, of course, so I'm just going to put that there to cover that up. This is laying down right now. This is the actual cutting machine, the system, and these are the dies. Now, I purchased my system from Joann's. I purchased it many, many years ago when it was, not when it first came out, but when it was really going strong on the market. They were really pushing it at quilt market. They were, a lot of the bloggers, uh, you could go all over the blogs and you could win actual die cutting machines and dies. I purchased my machine and a set of dies, but I have won several dies from those giveaways. And I didn't do this at the time, but if you could make a video and put it up on YouTube, for every video you made, you got a free die. So that's how a lot of people built up their die systems, all their, their little die sets. And I thought that was wonderful. But we're talking, it had to have been maybe at least 10 years ago, and I definitely was not, I was not YouTube ready at that time. But boy, that would have been a great way to get some free dies. I was also able to purchase my set. It was oh, it was a little over three hundred dollars, I believe. But before Joanne stopped you from being able to use your fifty percent off coupons, I actually used a fifty percent off coupon on my set. So I'd gotten my machine, and then I'll show you some of the dies if I remember which dies came with the set. But at this point, it doesn't matter. You can purchase these. Joanne's is no longer selling them. They clearanced them out a few months ago. You can purchase them right from AccuQuilt online, and I'll see if I can go ahead and put the link down there for you. So what this is, this one is a little bit heavy. They have the little, they have the, the Go Babies, which are smaller. And then they have the electronic version, which will automatically put it through and you won't have to crank. See, this comes with a crank handle. So you wouldn't have to crank the handle at all. So if you could leave this set up on a table somewhere and not have to lift it all the time, it would be really great for people that have problems with strength or lifting heavy items. Then there's a big system. For people that are cutting fabric, like if you're in a quilt shop and you're cutting a whole bunch of fabric packs or you have maybe an Etsy shop or an online shop and you want to cut a whole bunch of charm squares for people, there's a larger system that if I can look it up and put the name down there because, like I said, the brain's not working today and I can't remember all the names. But it has this spot right up here in the handle and you just go ahead and pull these apart. I always feel like maybe they're... They're magnetized or something because it is a little bit hard for me to pull apart sometimes. And then this just lays down flat on your table. Let me give you a little peek back here. So here's the one handle where it lays flat. Here's the part where it's going to cut everything. And then here's the handle that cranks things through and you can crank it one way or the other. There's only one handle, so you can't, you know, switch either side of the table. Then it comes all the way over here and it's the same thing. These are just the pieces that fold down. Now let's look at some of the dies that I have. Now with these dies, I don't know what they look like now, but I think they're pretty much about the same. They may have changed a few things like in the early days you had to take 
You had to take a Sharpie marker and draw around your design so you could see where it is. But nowadays they come with a dark gray foam here and a light gray foam here so that you could see where everything is. And right along here in all these cracks, that is where the blade is. So you never want to like push down on this because there is, it's a full shape, like a cookie cutter, but very, very sharp. And on the side of the dies, it tells you what they are. So this one is for a half square, three inch finished triangle. And it gives you the little picture. So I, I always wanted to make different triangle quilts. So that's all you used was triangles or pyramids or squares. So I thought this would be great for cutting up scraps. And you've seen my rectangle. And once again, it tells you on the side what the measurements are, three and a half by six and a half. You can see where I drew around so that I knew exactly where the to lay my fabric. This one is put diagonally because if you're running it through your machine, these cut better if they're on a diagonal. So it, it for whatever reason, it cuts the fabric better. There are certain things you know about straight grain and which way is bias and stuff like that. And if you lay your fabric a specific way, so that straight grain is going in one way or the other, it cuts better. Because if you're if you're running this through the machine like this and you have it set on the bias, it does pull the fabric just a little this way, so it could stretch it out. But for my projects, I'm not looking for precision. I can wiggle, I get the wiggle room. I'm not looking for making like Ohio stars with the really sharp points to make sure everything's perfect. If I'm running through for scraps for a rectangle, it's okay, I can always just tuck it in a little and fudge it if it stretches. And a lot of times when I'm cutting my scraps, I just have bits and pieces. I'd have to always sit there and figure out which way the straight grain is and I'd rather just lay it down there and cut it out and take my chances. This one is a rag square, it's five and a quarter. It says two up, so I guess that means there's two of them there. I've used this quite a bit. The rag die is a little bit more annoying to use because you'll get all kinds of little threads stuck in there. And as you can see, you might be able to see that the die, the blade is down right in there. You can see it a little bit. But they have a, like a dental toothpick, a metal pick. It's buried right now in my craft room, so I didn't get to pull it out. But you can just take it in there and you can pick out all of the pieces of thread and fiber that are stuck in there. And I thought apple core die, that would be really fun. So this is one of the ones that I know I chose as a winning one. So I grabbed this. This is this doesn't have a size on here, but I wrote on here that I need to cut my fabric at six inches by seven and a half inches. So it's six inches by seven and a half. And when you're putting your fabric on these, you can accordion fold or fan fold like this. And when you do that, you get this, when, as it cuts it, it's gonna cut out this melon shape like this, like a lozenge, I think they call it. So that is really fun to have. So then you can have all of your, when you have scraps from your scraps, you can have all these pieces to make a different type of quilt with. I've also bought the hexagon ones. So they're one inches, one and a half, and two and a half. And that tells you the side right here on how big it is. It's not how far across it goes this way. I've used this a little bit, but I haven't used it very much because like for the two and a half inch side, I like to cut it a little bit larger and I'd have to cut my, this would be my fabric, so I'd have to make sure my papers were smaller than that. And the ones I make, I just didn't really work out for this. So I have this die and I haven't used it very much but you never know, I might bring it out in the future and do something with it. These dies are really sturdy. There is a wood frame inside here. When I get to another one, I'll show you what it looks like. You're supposed to store them upright like this, like you would dishes in a strainer so they don't warp. Mine, like I said, I've had these for, I'm just gonna say around 10 years. And they haven't, only one of them has warped and it's really a long one, my two and a half inch die cutter. And when I get to that, I'll show you what that looks like. I also have the square four and three quarters inch. I'm really not sure. I think this is before charm squares were really popular. They were they were out, so people were using them, but I'm not really sure why Go decided that a four and three quarters inch square was the way to go when everyone's making charm squares. So since then they have come out with new die sets so you can have a five inch charm. My triangles at four and seven eighths. 
And what I like about these die sets is they cut off the little ear for you right there. So it's easy to know, because if you were piecing two of these together, you'd have to know to start in a quarter of an inch from the tip to make sure you get everything lined up all right. And this one already does it for you. All these points are cut right off. And if you go to the Go site, the AccuQuilt site, they have a lot of free patterns that go with these sets, with these dies, and you can also purchase additional patterns that people have designed. I've seen a lot of people design a quilt specifically for using one of these dies, but they also give you like the standard measurements and cut it so you can rotary cut it and stuff like that. So in case you don't have a Go. And this one has three and a half inch squares. This is the things that came within that bundle that I purchased because three and a half inch squares, once again, that's not, I mean, you can make quilts from it, no problem, but that's not like a, we tend to think in pre-cut sizes now. So you tend to think of two and a half inch, five inch, but three and a half inches, you can still use that. It's a perfectly good die. And if you're cutting up your scraps, once again, it's a great way to quickly run through scraps. When you're cutting with this system, and you can either just lay a flat piece of fabric or fan fold it, and you can go usually up to six layers. I like to do maybe two or three just to see how that fabric goes through when I crank it and to see how it feels. Many of you know I have issues with my shoulder and neck, so six layers is kind of going through quite difficultly for me, because in addition to this, you also have to have a protective mat on top so that the blades this is going to be pushing against it and it's going to make the blades come up and you don't want the blades to come up against this so you have to have a cutting mat now these you have to replace after so many times but you can use they're, they're technically two-sided just flip them over use them for multiple dies you don't have to just have it for this die as you can see i've used two different shapes on there Now this came with my set. This is what they call the value die. Now I believe the value die has changed. I'm not 100% sure, but you can do your little half square triangles. You have a, so this is a four and a half inch square, and then you have a two and a half inch square. Now a few years back, I did see they finally came out and listened to the quilters. They have one of these square boards like this where you can do nine or 12, two and a half inch squares. So you can lay a fat quarter down or just a chunk of fabric and you don't have to worry about, like this one, if I put a fat quarter down, I'm gonna get all these pieces. And if I want just two and a half inch squares, I have to pre-cut my fabric or fold it nicely just to lay on here so that I don't go and get any of these other pieces cut. So it's nice that you can just put the whole square through. You can see where there's a little bit of red fabric stuff in there. Now, my foam here is becoming unglued from the wood board underneath there. You can see that. I could easily glue the bat back down. Maybe next time I pull this out to actually use it, I might go ahead and do that. But for now, I don't worry about it. It still works fine. This is one of my favorite dies. They have a lot of, see this guy is the Critters. They have a lot of applique dies. Now I think that's really great if you're gonna do, they have Christmas ones and they have Halloween ones and Easter ones and they have trains and houses and everything. So if that's your style of quilting and you make a lot of those, then I think that these dies are really worthwhile because you can pre-fuse your, you know, you put your fusible on the back of your fabric and then you can cut it out on here and it'll be all set to go. I have a butterfly, a bee, and a dragonfly. So I have used these several times and they're really fun to put on bags and stuff like that. I haven't made like a big quilt or anything with them, but it's just nice to put on a little shoulder bag or a little zip pouch or tote bag or something. I do have a lot of dies. This one is a six and a half inch square. This came with the set when I purchased it. When I pull out my scraps before I was doing the strip system that I'm doing right now, I would pull the go out a couple times a year and I would just put on my scraps and I'd, I'd start with, I'd start with, um, maybe I'd start with the smaller ones or I'd start with the larger ones and vice versa and depending on my day and what my fabrics look like. And I'd go ahead and I'd cut a whole bunch of squares then I'd cut a whole bunch of triangles and I would just keep them in some type of a plastic container. And then whenever I needed those for some type of scrap quilt, I can just pull them out because they were already cut. And it's a quick way to get through a lot of your scraps. I have a six and a half inch tumbler. I've made several quilts with these. These are fun. I know they have a smaller tumbler. I wanna say it's maybe four and a half inches or three and a half inches. 
Now, I don't plan on buying too many more dies, but that is one die that I would really like to purchase because when you put them together, you can make like a wreath with them. You can make a circle. You just kind of put these all together like you would a Dresden plate, and then they would just make a wreath. And I thought that would be really fun to make wreaths, uh, just a wreath wall hanging with one wreath on it for all the different holidays. Having big wreaths on our front door and stuff would be fun, but the wind tends to blow them around and then you'd have to store them all the time. So where am I gonna put these wreaths? But if I make a little wall hanging for every holiday, those store up really nice and easy and I can just put them all in one container and pull them out for the holiday. So that is on my wish list, and eventually when I get around to it, I'll purchase one of those. These are the six and a half inch triangles. These are nice and large and chunky. I have not made anything from this. You can see that they'd already started to change some of, this isn't as light as it looks. This is like a medium gray, and this is more the charcoal gray. This is accurate in color. There you go, now it looks about accurate. So they did try different foams as they were working through their systems. They also have these big long dies. Like this is a two and a half inch strip. I believe they have a one and a half inch strip also. Now here's the one that I had some issues with. They've all been together in the same spot on my closet. I have a nice shelf for them. I have them all standing up the way you're supposed to. None of them are leaning. But as you can see, let me go ahead and move some of this stuff out of the way so I can show you what this die looks like. Okay, here's the big long die with the two and a half inch strips. And it got, it's hard to see, but it, not only did it warp, but it's also came unglued. So we can see here, this is where all of the blades are in there. I'm just gonna have to go ahead and get some E600 or 6000, whatever it is, and glue this back down. The plastic part here is a little bit warped, but you know, I've been using this recently to make some black two and a half inch strips to work on my four patches, and it runs through the go cutter just as easily. So I wouldn't just automatically throw something out like this. If you were having problems with it cutting, that's one thing, you know, maybe you could talk to AccuQuilt and see if they do any type of replacement program. I'm not sure if they do, but yeah, it works fine. So I'm not worried about it. So I just go ahead and just, I use it no problem. And once again, you have to have the mat that goes on top of these. The mats have been changing over the years. When I first started getting them, it's this, it was this plasticky stuff. It does tend to get a little dry, but you can see I've used it many, many times. I've marked with the Sharpie, and then when I run it through, it takes the Sharpie will transfer sometimes because I never wait for it to dry, but it's okay. And then the next one like this, it's more of this rubbery kind, or the rubbery kind came first and then the plasticky one, I don't know. But whenever they went on sale at Joann's, I would just go ahead and pick up extra ones so that I would make sure I had enough. Like I said, see, you can use a lot. I would put it through this way, then I'd put it through this way, then I'd put it through this way, then i put it through this way, and this one is starting to really get kind of cracked and dried through there but once again it still works so it's okay the last one i have this is how they come when they come with their paper on it and everything like this this is the one for the for the dresdens and there's all kinds of pattern not the dresdens the drunkard's path it still starts with a d i'm okay so there's a lot of different designs this is basically what i was cutting mine out for for little baby quilts Except I was thinking of maybe doing a nine patch and skipping the border so it makes it a little bit larger. Now this is all of my dies. So what do you say I get some fabric out, I'll pick a die, and we'll just go ahead and show you how easy it is to run it through the machine. I'm sorry, I skimmed over the best part about the rag die one. After you make the rag die quilt, normally uh, you have to cut it with scissors. That's what all these lines are for. It's already pre-fringed for you. Now when doing this with flannel, you definitely want to go with just two or three layers. What I like, I've learned over time from some helpful tips from bloggers and from practice is you put one piece of fabric face down, then you put one piece of fabric face up, and you run it through that way, and that way those two pieces of fabric are together. They also have a die to go with this, a partnership one, where it can cut your batting at the right size for inside this square. So I thought that was really smart. I don't have that. 
I'd already, it didn't come out at the same time that I had this. It was a later edition that it come out. And I'm like, I can just cut. I don't make that many rag quilts. And half the time I don't put batting in them anyways. I just put two pieces of flannel. So I thought that's it's just, a, it'd be a waste of money for me to purchase that. But yeah, so you don't have to cut it with your hands and get all that hand fatigue from cutting all that fringe. It does it right there for you. When these first came out, there was a group of people that said, oh, you're wasting so much fabric. Look at all the fabric you're throwing away when you cut it. And I'm going to show you some of what could be wasted. I have some hexagons that I'd gotten in, in a fabric swap here that has, they have the Easter eggs on it. It's cut into these giant large hexagons. So I'm going to use that as my scrap fabric. And then I have these blue patchwork, faux patchwork. That's just another chunk of fabric that came in the package that has some pieces cut out of it. But we're going to consider this like a fat quarter. Now, one of the things you want to do is I haven't pressed this or anything, but it's always a good idea to make sure your fabrics are ironed really well. And if you're looking for precise points and everything, maybe go ahead and starch it and that'll make it really nice and stiff and it'll go through the system a lot easier and you'll get really precise cuts out of it. Now, I don't know how it is now, but way back in the day, they used to put pieces of, they'd put all their fabric down and then they put a sheet of like a notebook paper on it. And they said that was one of the little tricks to keep the fabric to stay there and not have it stretch as much once again I never really had problems with that I'm going to use the half square three inch finished triangle die and I brought out a nice little pretty one so we don't have to look at the nasty uglies so one of the things you can do is you can measure the die and say okay so here's my squares here and if they're what are we again three inch finished so these are at three and a half inches so I would want to put down a piece of fabric that's at least three and a quarter inches but for me I would kind of go down to a, a little bit larger to a four inch just to make sure that I'm staying in that section so you can go ahead and take your fabric and cut out four inch strips if you'd like or if you're just working with scraps just kind of layer it on there sometimes when I'd have my scraps and I'd layer it on I'd only be able to cover up part of the die and I would not worry about it I would just go ahead and take that and toss that because that is going to be extra if you have pieces of fabric that are all cut out like this and everything, before you would be able to use your rotary cutter, you would still have to square these up. So you're still going to go through that amount of fabric, correct? So what I do is I take my die, and depending on the types of fabric, if I'm just dealing with scraps like this, I look at it and I lay it down. If I'm going to lay it like this, and I have, I have this extra laying over, because remember, any bit of fabric on here needs to be less than six. You don't want more than six layers. So I try to make sure that I'm covering up that die and I've gone past with this ragged piece. And then you can just fan fold it. Look and see where your line is. Make sure you can use a silver Sharpie if you have one of the older dies. Maybe you pick it up at a garage sale or an estate sale. So you want to make sure it goes past now when you cut this, it's going to cut right here. So you're going to have this piece is on a fold. So you're going to have maybe an inch or two of a strip of fabric that you can use for your crumbs or whatever in there. Now when, they, when this Go Cutter was really popular, when it first was on the market big time at the stores and all, I don't remember hearing too much about crumb quilts. So maybe that's something that they should have looked into back then. And all these little bits that they're cutting off could have been perfect for crumbs. And then once again, you would just fold it back and make sure you're still staying within the die area. I'm just going to roughly do this and I'm going to actually just lay it on here so it lays straight on there and covers the entire die because for right now I'm not worrying about getting it perfect. Now when I do this for yardage and if I wanted to make a quilt with all of these these half square triangles I would definitely cut four inch strips off of my fabric. I find that much easier just to lay down there and it'll be less fiddly that way. Now, as you can see, I have this extra piece right here. What I could do is just lay it off to the side. I have to make sure I've got one, two, three. This would be a fourth layer if I left it. I would get some. This one I can kind of peek and if I lay it just right, I should still be able to get enough half square triangles out of it. I'm going to lay my mat on top. Now they tell you, uh, I don't know how the dies are now and if they're at different angles on there, but in the beginning they said not to go straight in, to always just kind of kick it a little bit to an angle. So I just kind of 
push it up against here. Can you hear that? It just stops. And then what I like to do is I just hold my hand on it here just to get it started. And I'm going to crank. And once it gets started, I put my hand on here because I have a wobbly table. And the, you'll see when we get cranking on how this kind of moves around a bit. Can you kind of see how I'm... So it's, it is a little bit of pressure, but they show like little five and eight year old kids in the videos using this. And I think it's just, for me, it's because of the whole shoulder issue. Now cranking on this, it's going to be different for everyone else. Everyone, you know, depending on how your body is and where your weaknesses are. Now I can do this for several hours as long as it's not like constant. If I'm not sitting here constantly, I'm always stopping and doing my fabric and then going back to the machine. And it doesn't really bother my shoulder that bad. Everything bothers my shoulders. So when I say not that bad, then, you know, it's not too bad. Let me move the machine out of the way and I'll show you what this looks like. All right, it's gone through the machine. Now there's going to be some static. So when you lift this off, there's always fabric stuck to it. Okay, I lied. Sometimes there's fabric stuck to it. Then you can either pull your extra fabric off or you can just go ahead and pull out your pieces that you cut. So there they go. I have one of these. There's four, seven, 11. So I cut, I think it looks like I cut 15. I don't know. There's okay. There's four layers of fabric at each. So, okay. So I cut 16 of the half square triangles like that. And then they're all identical and they all have their little dog ears here. See how all the triangle, the tips have been cut off except for this one here. So if you run you can choose to run, let's say you're making a black and white quilt. So you put one strip of black and one strip of white. And you can put one strip of black, one strip of white. And as you pull them off, if you do them right sides facing, when you open them up, you'll be all set to sew them together. So you can keep them together like this and use them as a leader ender project. So then you just put them right sides together, leave them right sides together, run them through the sewing machine. This is gonna automatically, you know, knock that corner off there for you. And then when you pop it open. Now, from what I remember, I didn't even have to trim these down. If you got your quarter inch right, well, whatever one you used, if you use the same seam allowance on every one of these, then it's going to be fine. If you use a fat quarter or a thin quarter, then they're all gonna be the same size, you'll be fine. So I never even had to trim these after I opened them up. They were all ready to go into the quilt and there was no problem. So I think if it's something that you can afford, I think these systems are great. Each system does uh, something different, so it all depends on what you're gonna need, which one is best for you. Maybe do a little search on YouTube for all the different cutting systems. I can only go by what I remember from several years ago. I kind of went out of the blogging sphere for a little bit and I everything just exploded. That's when Facebook got popular and Instagram came along and YouTube got popular and then all of a sudden the blogs died off. So it was really popular to be a blogger. People were blogging every day. You had Blogtober where you blogged every day in October and then you did it in Christmas and stuff like that. And then when I came back, it's like everyone had stopped blogging because it's so much easier just to throw something on Instagram, put a couple sentences and you're done. Some libraries used to have these ghost systems that you can go ahead and you know just bring your fabric. You can either rent it or use it for free. I've seen quilt shops where they have it. Uh, guilds, if you go to guild meetings, sometimes they'll have these different machines. As I said, I'm really far out of the loop when it comes to stuff like that. So just go ahead and check with any of those organizations that you're part of and see what they happen to have available. And then test them out or maybe find a friend and see what they have and what they use and what's gonna work for you. Now let me show you what I have left on my scraps here. So this is what the people were complaining about. They're like, oh my gosh, you have so many scraps left over. Why are you throwing that away? Well, I don't always throw things away. Well, I don't throw things away. You guys know that. I like to keep all my scraps. So as you're going through and you can open this up and you can see, okay, well, I have this chunk here. So I'm going to cut this off here. I'll cut that off. And I'll just follow through because this is where I wasn't paying attention when I was folding it. So I have more scraps, extra fabric left over than you would if you were to cut your four inch strips. But I have this. And this is 
oh, it's almost two and a half. So I could probably go through and I could cut this on a small die that has uh, the smaller little triangles or I can just hand cut this with my rotary cutter and ruler and cut this into a two inch strip and use this for my string blocks. Sometimes it's fun to see different shapes that aren't the standard geometric like a square or a rectangle or a triangle. The different ones with the animals and stuff and like this piece right here, this is perfectly usable for a string quilt so I could take that off and put it in my string bin. Depending on how small you want to go, you have all of these pieces that are good for crumbs. You can depend on which one you want to have the bigger piece, so you can just cut them off. You can trim these down. If they're larger pieces, they can go back through your die system. For one of your other blocks, maybe put this through on the little hexagon one, so you can cut out a hexagon on these. So I wouldn't throw these out of all of the stuff that's extra here that people say you're wasting. I think these would be the only two pieces that I would throw away. All of these would get recycled back into my string blocks and I would go ahead and trim them down. For me, I like to trim them down to a usable size. Even this one here, I save one and a half inch strips. So if I can get a one and a half inch square or a two inch square out of this, this is going to go into my scrap bins. So I don't feel like, I've never felt like there's a lot of waste with this system. Because if you're a scrap quilter, it works great. If you don't like to save anything under two inches or five inches or whatever it happens to be, there are some people that won't save anything under a, a charm square or the, the 10 inch squares that they have. And some people don't even save anything under a fat quarter. So it all depends on what your scrapitude is and whether or not you want to save these things and use them. Most of you guys that are watching me are already into saving scraps one way or another, whether you're very color coordinated or you're just crazy like me and put everything together because if nothing matches, then everything matches, right? So when I'm cutting, I always keep a nice pair of scissors next to me. So as I pull things off the die, I just go ahead and trim off what I don't need. I throw it into the trash and I take these and I put them into a bucket. So after I've done my session of the go, and I know you're not supposed to wave scissors around. That's all right. I'm all alone except for the dog and she's protected in the corner. We'll just put them out of my reach, right? So then I would set these into a basket. So I've, I've done my go cutting for today. And then next time I decide that I want to cut up some scraps, I'll go ahead to this bucket and I'll trim up all the smaller pieces. And I think that's a really great way to take, I've taken large, large uh, Rubbermaid tubs, large laundry baskets full of scraps that have been pushed down and pushed down so they're not even fluffed up. I've taken a couple days to process them through this system. And then I've come out with, you know, small little containers and it, it goes from that giant big bucket down to just a nice little manageable stack because everything is nice and neat and it's laying flat together. So then when you want to do leader enders or you want to do a, I don't feel like thinking today, like today, if I try to do anything really involved, I am not going to do it. I'm going to be seam ripping a lot. I'm going to get very upset. And the more mistakes I make, the more mistakes I'll make. So on a day like today, it's great to take out one of either to cut my scraps from either the go or by hand, or I can just grab my bins of things and then just go ahead and piece a quilt that way. So maybe I just want to have some scrap squares or triangles and I just work through that process. So there's nothing to think about. It's just going through the sewing machine piece by piece real easy. So thanks for listening to me rattle and ramble on today. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye. Of course, any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. And if anyone else has one of these systems, they can kind of give you their opinion or point you to their favorite YouTube video or blog post. Bye.